Okay, I'm just going to start. Uh, hi, my name is Jan Bardavide. I'm the chair of the Wikimedia Board of Trustees. Thank you all for coming for our annual Q&A. We're a little nervous because we have competition from five other exciting tracks, but that seems to have not stopped a lot of you. Thank you. Um, basically, we have an hour in which you can ask us questions. I have two housekeeping announcements. Um, first of all, Stuart West cannot be present. He was with us for the board meeting earlier, but due to family circumstances, he had to go back to Paris, so he couldn't attend this Q&A. And Jimmy, unfortunately, due to a scheduling mistake on our end, was scheduled for both a live interview and this. Apparently, the live interview has to be live, so <laughs> that's, until, that's until 3.30, and he will join us for the last half an hour, and uh, we'll be able to answer questions, etc. at that time. Um, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves, um, with a, one caveat is Patricio is the new Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, so congratulations. <laughs> Alice, would you like to start? So, I start. Hello. I'm Alice Wiegand, coming from Germany. I'm on the board now for two years, and I'm really glad that the board chose me to serve on the board for another two years. One of the things which really touches me and my work is to bring in the best of everyone and each individual in our movement without wasting its time, wasting energy and everything else. And that is for structures and groups and informal and formal things as well as for just the single, only and lonely writer or photographer. Hello everyone, my name is Anna Toni. I also come from, I also know, I come from Brazil. <laughs> I come from Germany, I come from Brazil. I've been on the board for one year and um, unfortunately for personal reasons I am uh, resigning from the board. So I'm a new and outgoing board member. Hello, I'm SJ Klein. Uh, I'm from Boston and uh, I come from the world of libraries and archives and I'm currently chair of the art committee. So if anyone has deep questions about Wikimedia finances. Hello, my name is Maria Sefidari. I come from Madrid, Spain, and I've been on, serving on the board for the last year, so I'm one of the new members like Anna. And uh, I'm gonna be chairing the next year the board governance committee, so if you have governance questions, by all means, don't be shy. Hello, I'm Frida Brioschi, I'm from Italy. It's my second time on the Board of Trustees. Last time was in 2007, and uh, I will serve in the HR committee, and I will be one of the FDC liaison. Hello, I'm Patricio Lorente, Vice Chair of the Board. Um, I come from La Plata, Argentina. Uh, this is my second term as a uh, member of this board. Uh, I've been for the last two years, and now I've been reselected by the affiliates of our movement. And I think that's pretty old. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, my name is Phoebe Ayers. I am from California in the US. I, this is also my second term on the board, although it's a little complicated. I uh, served from 2010 to 2012, um, having been selected by the chapters and was re-elected by the community last year. So my term goes till next year. Um, I am a librarian. <coughs> and uh, I work with science and open access. Hello, I'm Bishaka. I live in Mumbai, India, and this is actually my fifth Wikimania as a board member and the fifth time I'm going to do this Q&A session, which I always look forward to. In my day job, I run a nonprofit. I make documentary films. I do some writing and lots of stuff like that. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to Catherine Marr, who is our Chief Communications Officer. She'll be doing the emceeing, or the Master of Ceremonies, of this uh, Q&A session.
This is Mike Live. Oh, fantastic. So sorry, everyone. We'd hope to be able to do this a little bit more informally without me at a podium, but it doesn't seem there are quite enough mics to be able to MC while you all speak. So the first question that we have here, and if you're in the audience and following along, please do note that these questions are available on the Wikimania 2014 site uh, under questions for the Q&A with Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. The first question we have is, the current strategy document is for the period 2012 to 2015. In the recently published annual plan 2014 to 2015, a strategy process for the next period was abandoned. Can you elaborate on strategy planning for the moment, or for, excuse me, for the movement and for WMF? So the foundation, the last time we did our five-year strategy, we developed a strategy that was somewhere between something for the foundation and something for the whole movement, and that was never exactly resolved. And since then, there have been a number of debates as early as 2010 with people wondering if there should be a separate strategy that was clearly just for the foundation. So this year, the foundation is in the middle of developing a strategy for itself, and there have been a couple of staff retreats, which will, end, which will result in a foundation strategy by the beginning of next year. And we are hoping to support whatever community processes there are to move towards a, a real strategy for the movement. Uh, that's a lot more interesting now than it was five years ago. There are probably 20 different chapters and sister projects that each have some version of a strategy. Wikisource has been developing its own. Uh, there are some individual technical projects that have very specific roadmaps. I don't know if anyone here uses um, some of the math plugins, math extensions, but both the music and math development communities have little roadmaps of what they want to see over the next few years. So I think we'll end up seeing a very different community process. And uh, the foundation's open to good ideas about how to facilitate that and what it should look like. But whatever the foundation does itself, that, I think that'll be the piece that looks the most like uh, the process five years ago. And it'll be a, a much smaller group and it'll be a much more focused result. And I think it's worth noting that Lila will spend some time on this tomorrow in her keynote, and if not, she'll look really panicked and right now, like, what? No, but she's really going to spend some time giving a little bit of the outlines of what, we're, what it looks like. So if you'd like I know, to go... I know, that's why I'm looking at her, like, I know she's here. So from my perspective, uh, the foundation definitely needs to have a focus and understanding of where we're navigating towards. And that's why it's so critical for us to um, take care of this immediately. That said, I want us to realize that strategy, the way we understood it in the past, um, was actually a set of goals um, and a bit of a misnomer. Um, so I want, us to, uh, I want to actually reset expectations on what strategy is. I'm not going to do this now, but I will touch on that uh, tomorrow. And as we start um, developing and, and um, talking about it um, uh, in the public like we do with everything, uh, it will become more clear. Oh, all right, excellent. <laughs> um, so just a reminder that if you'd like to go ahead and update with another question, uh, you can freely do so on the wiki. I'll keep refreshing here to see any questions that you may add. After we've run through the questions on wiki, we'll start opening up and having questions from the audience. And my Wi-Fi just went out. Okay. <laughs> of course it did. Um, so as I recall, there was a second question that was incredibly long and actually quite complex about one particular instance. I have assurances from Jan Bart that the board will follow up with an answer to that question afterwards. And so we're going to move on to the third question on Wiki, which I hope my Wi-Fi comes back. Luckily, I remember what it is, and it's a question we're having to do with uh, internet.org and the appearance of Wikipedia content on the new internet.org product that has been launched in Zambia, and whether or not Wikipedia was involved in any way in that launch. Well, yeah, I can't hear very clearly. At this end, it's echoing, but if I hear your question correctly, Catherine, I don't think we were directly involved in a partnership, but because all the content on Wikipedia is free content anyway, we've made that available. 
Yeah, we're, we're not actually an official partner of Inset.org, um, but we told the people behind it, including Facebook, like, this is an open license project. You can use our content if you adhere to the licensing. So we're not an explicit partner, but our content is being used. There's usually a please in there. You can use our content, please. Oh, sorry, yes, please <laughs> use our content. <laughs> All right, until my Wi-Fi comes back, I think we're probably opening it up to the crowd at this point. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, do we have questions here in the audience? Surely, surely some of you have a question. There's a question down in the front. Hello. Uh, there are signs of strategic plan for the next few years that you're planning to grow the number of staff, especially in engineering. Can you please explain what is the need you saw in making the foundation a bit bigger? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question, Catherine? Yeah, yes, First, we can't please. hear them at all. Yeah, I don't think any of us can hear the question. Yeah. The question. Can you hear me all right? Okay. A little not, bit. not so well. It's okay. So. It's because the mics are echoing, like mm -hmm. we're having feedback mm -hmm. off the floor speakers. Just repeat it, please. Okay, um, I asked, I signed the strategic plan for the next years that you're planning to make the staff bigger. I mean, add more people, especially in engineering. Can you explain, please, the reasoning behind the need to, uh, to hire more people. Would you like me to repeat that? Yeah. So the question was that there is a plan to increase the number of staff at the foundation, especially in engineering. Could you please elaborate on the reasons behind that? Okay. <laughs> um, I think that the, the specific question with regards to how we're hiring more engineers, et cetera, is something that it's left to the executive level. What we do see is that we're not where we want to be with regards to MediaWiki, and I think we need to, uh, that's one of the reasons why we hired an executive director who has a focus on product engineering. And she's currently sort of, has a pretty crisp analysis of where we're at and, and that, uh, what's needed. And if she feels that we need to hire more engineers to solve that problem or focus in other areas, that's something she would basically execute on and within parameters set by something at the board level. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll elaborate on that too, which is um, what that stems from is saying the direction of the foundation as a technical organization. And we are a technical organization. We're an engineering organization. Um, half of our staff, correct me if I'm wrong, Lila, are um, involved in engineering and the product, which is the websites, our own projects. and. Let us not forget that we run the fifth biggest website in the world. It's a big endeavor and it's a big technical project um, and there's a lot to do on that side, um, as I think we all acknowledge. And so um, hiring more engineers is uh, a, part of, a part of that direction. While we're working on the technical difficulties, um, maybe more engineers for that. <laughs> Are there other questions from the audience at the moment? Great. Uh, hello. I'd like to know your opinion on uh, Wikipedia Zero, on the principle of net neutrality. Could any of you of us elaborate on this? Yeah. In the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, it's been some debate around Wikipedia Zero and whether conflicts with the concept of net, net neutrality. And my opinion is that net neutrality refers specifically or mostly to the fact that some services or some certain companies are trying to pay to use what is called the fast lane lanes of the internet. If there are fast lanes, there are also slow lanes. And that is not the internet we want. We completely reject that possibility. In this sense, we completely support the concept of 
net neutrality. But, but when going to Wikipedia Zero, we are not going, we are not talking about fast or slow. We are talking about people who is outside the road at all. So what we are trying is to give them access to a basic human right, which is access to information and knowledge. And I know some people don't agree with this opinion because they have a wider notion of net neutrality. And I'm sorry, but my opinion is quite different. If our concept of net neutrality prevents us to secure human rights, then we should revise the concept of net neutrality. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have a follow-on to that? I think that was fairly well definitive. All right, um, thank you so much for the phone up here, which I don't have a passcode for. <laughs> oh, I won't repeat that. <laughs> you guys broke the internet. Um, okay, so the next question, which is on Wiki, is what does the board expect they'll be working on in the next year, apart, of course, from the same thing as every year, which is taking over the world? <laughs> Should there be more clear lines about the extent of the community's authority versus the foundation's authority? For example, how independent should communities be in deciding how their communities are configured? Does the Wikimedia movement need a formal constitution describing the role and authority of various groups in our movement? Where should we start with this yes. bunch of questions? <laughs> so maybe I just take the first lead and then someone else uh, take it over because I'm not, I wasn't able to really pick that up all. So starting with what are our main priorities during the next the coming year, I think there are several things that really needs to be done. And the first is, we started the question round with that already, is working on the strategy. We need to focus on what we do and what we don't do to really figure out who we are and which way are we going to go during the next few years. Not only from day to day, but having really goals in front of us where we put our energy in to achieve them. That's really, really important, and that is one of our main things to work out. And it's not that it's an easy, easy task, because doing this kind of strategy, although it, it, would, it will be quite different from what we did five years ago, is a huge amount of things to do. And we have all those, um, all those people who are interested in what we do and who are affected in, of, uh, on the things we do, they all want to have a say and they should have some option and opportunity to bring input into these, this process. And so that's one of our main priorities and now I'm glad to just reach it over. Okay, I'm going to try and answer the part of the question that I did hear, and please pardon me because I can only hear up to Patricio properly, so I have, I have to be, basically guess what other people are saying. But what I wanted to say is that I think for us in the year ahead, something that's particularly important is really putting in place the conditions that will ensure that we make our new executive director, Laila Tretikov, who's here on the stage with us, as effective as she can be, right? So I think there's an assumption that the board's role ends when we hire the new ED, and that is incorrect, because especially those of you who are on in the audience and are boards of other Wikimedia organizations or other organizations know, the first year is an extremely critical time for a new ED. So I think a lot, lot of our board thinking is really going to go towards determining how we as a board can effectively support her and create the conditions that can really facilitate her work. I totally agree with Mashaka and with Alice. I think those are the priorities that we have talked about broadly in our meeting this weekend. I am going to... Um, 
hijack this for one second because I'm curious. If you could raise your hands in the audience if you feel like you understand what this group of people is for. Like, why does the board exist? So, like, half of you? Yeah. Give or take? So I wonder if it's worth spending one minute on what we see our role in general as. Would that be useful to your people? You want to raise your hands again? Useful? Yes? All right. Awesome. Let's do it. Do you want to take it? Okay. We are here. Yeah? Was that a question? Or a wave? <laughs> Hi. Um, we, uh, we are here um, as the legal entity that governs the foundation. And what that means is we hire the executive director, Lila, who we're all extraordinarily glad to have with us. We um, have a fiduciary responsibility to oversee the Wikimedia, the Wikimedia budget. Um, and our responsibility is limited because we are the board of the Wikimedia Foundation, right? Not Wikipedia, not the projects, et cetera. Um, but when we think about the future of what we want Wikimedia to do, the kinds of decisions we make are, should we be an engineering organization? How much push should we put in that direction? What should our priorities for the foundation's work be? Our job stops there, largely, and we hand it to the executive director, working with the executive director, hopefully, who then makes decisions about things like, we should hire 10 engineers, 50 engineers, 100 engineers. Um, and so when we give you a vague answer about what our direction and work this year is going to be, it's because that's the kind of work that the board is for. Um, does anyone want to add on to that? Yeah. So I think, I think we've answered like three of the four questions, so I'm going to have a stab at the fourth, yeah. which was, if I heard correctly, if we should have a constitution, which is an intriguing concept, but I don't think that should come uh, from the top down. I think if the communities, and I'm saying the plural, really want to work and spend effort and time creating a constitution and thinking what the purpose of it would be, it shouldn't come from the board. And I'll add a little bit to that, which is one thing the foundation does want to do is to clarify things that the foundation is not going to be responsible for. So part of the foundation strategy is going to be things that are not within the foundation scope. And to the part of the question before the constitution about whether there needs to be clearer division of authority and role between the foundation and the communities, the answer is certainly yes. And how we get there, whether that involves some kind of ground, groundswell in the Constitution, which would, I think, I think the Foundation's involvement in that is as an observer, not even as a uh, participant. Uh, that's, that's a great question to have. This coming year is a nice time to have it, because having the change of a new ED and a new focus on technology uh, provides a little bit of momentum for other projects. I see there's another question on the wiki, and I just want to thank the wonderful mobile engineering team for having that great little green bar that lets me know when a new edit has come up. That's great. <laughs> All right, um, before we go to the question on the wiki, are there other questions from the audience? I think we saw some hands earlier. Um, down here in front, and then we'll go to you up in the back. Oh. <laughs> we'll go up to the back first, and then we'll come down in front. <laughs> Hi, I'm Delphine from France. Um, I have a question for Anna. Actually, uh, uh, you're going away, and I'd like to know what you're taking with you uh, from your experience within uh, this organization, and also given your um, experience in other nonprofits, international nonprofits, I'd be really interested if you had some advice for us as we go forward. Unfortunately, I think I'm getting out of this experience of one year much more than I was able to give, and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I learned a huge amount being just here for a small period, and it's my first week manian, and I wish um, no, I had the opportunity to stay more. I think what I take, um, 
which is fresh. I've been involved in many big organizations like ActionAid, Greenpeace, Amnesty, and the Wikimedia movement, community, the foundation, you are much fresher. You, as Salil yesterday alluded, you started in a different moment with the internet. And I think that freshness is what I'm bringing out mostly and looking at back of those old organizations that I'm very involved with. Um, that freshness, I think we're lacking in the other world. And you still have. And in terms of what I think uh, the danger is, is that you may be locking yourself into the same things that those big organizations have done. And I think that's a big danger. I mean, the world is there, you know, divided in countries, divided in different communities, and sometimes I feel that uh, we are just repeating those mistakes that some of those organizations have done, rather than just clear focus on the causes that we are there together. So we go into politics, internal politics, more than perhaps I wish, but all those organizations have that. Great, so I'm gonna go back to the question on the wiki and then we'll come back to the audience. Uh, the next question is, does wiki news have a future? Does wiki news have a future? The short answer is that's not for us to determine. And the long answer I'm, more or less comes down to the same thing. If the individuals behind Wikinews can make it happen, and for a large degree they have in some areas booked success, in other areas they haven't. It's, it's like asking does Wikipedia have a future, except it seems to be more certain for that. But it also still depends on everyone in this room and everyone outside this room. I, I will be a little more specific in that we have not we haven't directly talked about Wikinews any time recently, so there's nothing to answer because uh, we have not talked about it as a, bo as a body. And just to be, I don't think we, we uh, the last time we talked about a specific project is a very, very, very long time ago. The board doesn't discuss that kind of thing. That's it true. It, the it, board, it does the discuss, board yeah, did it, not like approve Wiki Voyage. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I think the so, general idea is yeah. that, that um, we do approve thematic organizations and chapters, etc. But the projects themselves, when they're not dependent on an organization type, which might need to be approved, are not are within our purview. No, no, and we, I do we, hope we, that they find think, creative ways to make certain things succeed and might change the formula or make this work. That's as I hope that every individual who has an idea for creating content is successful. Yeah. Just a brief and personal comment, not in any capacity of member of this board. I, I, I think that uh, Wikinews uh, is having some success in original reporting. I think if it has a future, might be is in that direction, but just my humble opinion. Just a uh, a brief personal thought is that uh, uh, the long way for uh, Wikinews, I think, is very hard. And it's quite similar to the, um, to how the citizen journalism is evolving. Probably is not uh, anymore a trend, and that's why uh, Wikinews uh, perhaps is not growing so faster in this moment. But uh, as Yamba told uh, at the very beginning, it's up to you. Hi. So, in my personal opinion, I think uh, I was more optimistic a year ago about the future of Wikinews than I am currently. Um, I think we could have supported more the project, and this is true for other smaller projects. Um, I hope the different communities, uh, and I'm not referring specifically to English Wikinews or Spanish Wikinews, but to all of them, I hope they can find a path forward. Maybe it's focusing or, you know, on original reporting. Maybe it's focusing on some other aspect, and I hope they can move it forward. Uh, they have to understand that uh, we don't think they have to compete with other news sources like 
BBC or CNN. They have to find a path that is sustainable for the size of their communities, and hopefully they will have a very long future ahead. Can I also just hijack it? Actually, what I wanted to do was, Delphine, the question that you were asking Anna, I wanted to answer part of it, but I thought it would be very rude since it was specifically directed to her. But now that we've had a little gap, I think I can try and answer it. Okay, so what I wanted to say was one of the things that really struck me five years ago when I came in as an outsider, and which still strikes me, is I had a history of working with movements and with volunteers, and I had never seen, and I still haven't seen, the kind of volunteer zeal and commitment that I see in the Wikimedia movement anywhere, right? At the same time, I think trying to link this with something that Lila said yesterday in her opening statement, which is how do we look at, the, at bringing the next billion people online, right? How do we really look at reaching out and sort of ensuring that Wikipedia tomorrow doesn't become what the print industry is becoming today, which is somewhat obsolete or not sort of a primary source? I think one of the things is that we tend to, as a movement, be somewhat inward focused, and we tend to think inside out, but not even like going out, 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 right? And I think one of the things, uh, risks for us is really that we need to complement this inside outish type of thinking with an outside in kind of thinking. We really need to think of people who are using Wikipedia, who are sort of, you know, very far removed from the kind of discussions, et cetera, that we are having. And just to explain one like very common thing that happens, try explaining to an outsider how Wikipedia works in like three minutes flat. It's extraordinarily difficult, but frankly, if we want to keep Wikipedia as vibrant and as relevant, et cetera, as it is, I think we need to switch a little bit of our headspace in that direction. Okay, just a little context for, I'm more sure of all assuming you follow Wikimedia out daily. Um, I just sent out an email just now, and Bishaka will not be, uh, is not available for her next term, so she's actually referring to the fact that at the end of December she will be leaving us as well. And may I just say, we're going to miss Anna and Bashaka both hugely, immensely. They both brought um, tons of energy and knowledge to this board. And a, a lot of it from both of you is this perspective from the outside world. Um, and, uh, and I would agree. I think, it's, I think it's interesting. Some of the things we've talked about this week or this meeting, the last two days, so, Yambart, you said the project is not our decision, and that, that's true, but how we think about global knowledge is, is what the board does. And, um, and we, have, we have been talking. We have been talking about that. Um, how, we, how we think about what's missing, how we think about integrating different types of knowledge, et cetera. That does not equal any particular conversation about a specific project. Phoebe, when you say that uh, Bishaka and I come from outside the world, I feel like uh, somebody from another planet. No, not outside the world. <laughs> yes, outside yes. This world. The outside world. <laughs> yeah. But also, if I can There's follow up on that, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they may be gone radio. Yeah, no, I explained. Uh, <laughs> Go on, Bishaka. Yeah, so just to follow up. Yeah, I think, but you know what, honestly, like, when I came in, I was an outsider. I really felt like I sort of crashed into this crazy world that I had no idea of, and I have to say, I really want to thank everybody for being incredibly, like, trusting, open, sort of showing me the way, all sorts of things, and I want to say, since Jan Bad did announce that I will step down at the end of this year, it feels terrible to say it because the reason is so trivial when we think of everything we're trying to do together, but the truth is that time is a major factor and this is a very time-consuming commitment. But what I do want to say is that coming from the outside, I now feel like this is as much my world as anybody is here, and so I do intend to remain part of the bigger Wikimedia movement. Yeah. Thank you. So glad. <laughs> Thank you.
So I'd like to go back to the audience for a question. I saw that we had one right down here in front before. And please, I see all your hands, and I will definitely get back to you. And if there's anybody up at the top that has a question, if you don't mind waving your hand around a little bit, it's kind of hard to see you from the stage. OK, um, I have a, a few questions. Um, I'll try and keep them as brief as I can. Um, so um, first of all, um, I wanted to say that I, having been a trustee and come back to Wikimedia UK, um, I found that the FTC process, which has obviously been brought in over the last couple of years, um, I think has driven more positive change within the chapter movement um, than any other process that exists or has existed within the movement. Um, and my first question was, um, I think that it's something that could drive similar positive change within the foundation. And obviously um, has partly been involved in subjecting itself to the FTC process last year. And I was wondering whether, firstly, um, is there a plan to, for the foundation to fully subject itself to the FTC process in the, in the same way that the chapters do? Um, and then that leads me on to my second question, that obviously we're now reaching a stage where the, the chapters are becoming much more mature and are taking uh, a much more introspective look at themselves, um, analyzing what their purpose, what their role, and what their value is to the movement, and how they can best deliver that. Um, and so my question is, do you, um, what value do you, as, as a board, see in the chapters? And do you feel that you get enough value from the chapters for the funding that goes to them through the FTC process? Maybe I just took the time. If we are looking so puzzled, it's just there are no monitor boxes or something like that. So it's really hard for us to understand you, although everything you say is quite clear, but it just doesn't come. And, So I, I'll just give a brief answer to the part that I understood. Um, I think that, if, uh, and this is me speaking personally, I think that um, looking into the past, uh, there have been many times when, no, I don't think that the chapters have delivered good value for money, um, given uh, the large amount of money spent um, and the little return. However, part of that is okay, because part of that is doing pilot projects and testing and learning and we try things and we find out they don't work. So you don't expect every new project uh, to, to give perfectly immense returns. And part of that's not okay. Part of that um, is because we as a movement didn't really take measurability seriously, didn't take uh, coming into an idea of what are we trying to accomplish strategically and what's the best way to get there. Um, and so we ended up doing a lot of things that we like doing. Um, and hoping that they did some good. And now I think we have a real opportunity uh, to really focus on those kinds of real bottom line achievements, you know, real questions like um, number of editors, uh, number of good quality editors, diversity of editors. There's a lot of other metrics we can look at, of course. Those are some of my favorite ones. Um, and to be really serious about it. And what I think is really hard is that we have set up this global structure um, where unfortunately every chapter is going to feel compelled, as all organizations do, to come up with a glossy report at the end of the year showing how great they did. Uh, it's a natural tendency for, for all organizations um, when we need to make harder questions and a broader level for the movement to say, wow, you know, this chapter has done a really fantastic job, but they've done a fantastic job in a jurisdiction where we really should be focused maybe on the global south or wow this chapter we love them and they're so great people but honestly what they're doing isn't performing so how do we deal with that and those are hard questions for all of us really hard questions and I think one of the things that's great today is that we're all taking those questions very seriously um, and hopefully we're taking those questions seriously in a non-adversarial way because that in the past has also been really problematic. I want to add one thing which I think is interesting is one of the uh, interesting things is if you hire an executive director with a, a large project engineering background is that metrics tends to come up a lot in, in, in talking and getting the right metrics, etc. And just like we have to know what every 
dollar, euro, whatever spent on a chapter brings in with regards to its return on the investment, the same thing goes for the foundation dollar that's spent. And I think that's a really important commitment to make sure that we try and make sure everything we do to the largest degree possible gives insight into the return on that investment. Yep. Thank you, fan club in the back. Um, <laughs> yeah, re regarding the last part that Shambat said, uh, in our first meeting, first day of board meeting with Laila, these past days, uh, she said something that was somehow a uh, request from members of the community in the exactly same words, and we were so happy that she tackled in this, this challenge with the same words. She said the foundation should lead by example. So we are supposed to be, uh, to get results in the same uh, metrics and uh, as had the other movement organizations. Um, I think you had another question. I'm not sure if I understood well, but you asked whether the foundation is going to participate in the FTC process in the future. Well, uh, the short answer is uh, the framework of the FDC is designed uh, in a way that this is uh, an attribution of our ED and not of this board. The long answer is that in the last FDC meeting, uh, we sent the foundation applied to the FDC in a different way than the chapters without a dollar amount. And we carefully listened to the FTC request that was not in this way, or whether you submit uh, your application in full, or you don't, and you look for a different kind of community review. Uh, in that sense, my personal opinion is that we have those two options. There's no an option. There's no an option to go to the FTC in a different way than the other chapters. And uh, I have uh, an informed feeling of what are we going to do, but again, this is uh, the call of our ED. Yeah. You will, I would like to take the opportunity to talk a bit about what it means to be an affiliate or just someone who has a great idea within the movement, because I think that is something we need to to figure out more than we might have done in the past. It is a bit like the WMF is not the center or the, the only place where creativity takes place within the movement, not at all. There are so many really, really wonderful people, individuals and also chapters who use, and, and thematic organization and, and user groups who, who use their potential to brainstorm, to make up their mind, what can we do to spread the word, to, to spread knowledge, to bring our idea into the, the la last edges on the world. And I do think that what we need to be uh, to do more than we did in the past is to figure out where's the highest potential to make this really happen and where should our support go and also to find out where are patterns that that just uh, reiterate or things also maybe mistakes or just uh, administrative um, over, over, yeah, overcap, which is not needed and figure it out and support and help there on a really, really early stage uh, to get the best out of all those motivated people, the motivation itself and the energy and the creativity. I would like to see more creativity within the whole movement. Uh, 
there's one of our oldest mottos, and this is funny because I borrowed something from the Italian chapters a few hours ago, but I see Frida wearing a shirt, and one of our earliest mottos is be bold. And I do think that, and I can't really make out when that was, but, but we are not yet so sticky on that motto. It faded away a bit, but it, don't, it didn't lose its power. I think being bold should be something we should have in mind with everything we do, and that should be kind of a yeah, rebirth of or, or, or there should be some kind of rebirth of this motto. I would like to see more people wearing this Italian T-shirt. Um, so I'm going to go. <laughs> yes, I just want to um, applaud that. Actually, uh, I see the value of chapters and user groups and our thematic orgs as being bold trying new things. When you go to the coolest chapter projects presentation, and I hope you do later today or tomorrow, um, the coolest projects that get picked out are the new things that people have tried, and that's important to us. Um, the other thing that we talked about this week as being a particular strength of local groups is building local partnerships, right? Building local partnerships with cultural institutions, governments, local places. Um, that is a thing that our local groups are very good at. And I don't, this is not an either or distinction necessarily. Um, I think that people should try things, not feel like they have to do certain types of programs simply because they are a chapter. They should do the things that work for them. And uh, we should focus, as Jimmy said, on what makes sense, what's, what's efficient, what, what gets us bang for our money, what, what works. Um, I, lost, I lost my train of thought, but, but I, think, I think that that those are the kinds of things that we've been talking about, about the strengths of local groups and chapters. And, and I am deliberately including user groups because I see lots and lots and lots of promise in user groups. I think almost everyone at this table has been involved in some sort of local group, and they're cool, right? Like, they do cool things, so. So because we just have 15 minutes left, I'm going to focus on the audience for now and because we know that the questions on Wiki will certainly be answered going yeah. forward. Uh, so right in the middle there, yes, sir, with your yellow pants and the white shirt. Thanks. Great. <laughs> Uh, hello, oh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you guys. I'm from Brazil. Uh, my name is Pedro Cagado. My question is for Jimmy. Um, I would like to know your, what's your take on um, this freedom of editing and creation of Wikipedia pages uh, about education, your take on education and education for the future. Um, were you ever concerned with how people are educating them, themselves with what can be sometimes wrong and unverified in the pages? And so, I mean, I understand that people nowadays have, can you hear me? What? I can't so, hear you. so, so. Without the mic. No, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, take the yeah. mic out. Can you start? Do it again. Yeah, okay. okay. Can you okay. stand up okay. and do it without the microphone? It's easier for okay. us to understand you then. Yeah. Try it without the mic. Yes, yeah, can. try yeah. Without, without the mic. Oh, okay. I think the only way we hear is the sound goes that way and bounces back to us, and it's impossible.
Okay, right. So I, I'll speak to the first one. I think the second one, um, probably the best thing is all of the official communications we've put out so far, I completely agree with. And I think our position is quite well explained there. And I'm in the press all the time talking about this. And I'm also happy to question, answer more specific questions by email. Um, on the first one, the, the culture of education. So one of the things that I know um, about people who participate in Wikipedia is that participating in Wikipedia helps people really to become much more serious uh, about their consumption of information because it forces you to look at multiple sources. It forces you to think about what is a reliable source, what counts as good quality information. And so I think that the culture of Wikipedia um, drives us in our community to try to present information that is high quality. Um, and that's part of who we are and it's part of what we're so proud of as a community, and I think that's really important. In terms of the broader internet, um, there is no question that there's loads of misinformation out there. Um, these days, my, my biggest concern is that um, as news consumption has moved from people going to Google News and seeing a lot of headlines and clicking to people going to Facebook and clicking on clickbait headlines and dramatic stories, um, which we are all, I think everyone is probably guilty. They, it's like some kind of They've, they've figured out how to exploit a bug in the human brain that says, you know, this, the 17 uh, funniest cat pictures you'll see this month, number eight will blow your mind. Oh, I don't want to click. Oh, I clicked anyway. Why am I reading this? Um, I, I'm actually getting over that now. I hope other people are. But I do have concerns about the quality of information online. Uh, there's also, you know, we've just seen in this the whole monkey selfie story, how many news headlines said Wikipedia claims that the monkey owns the copyright, which we didn't say, which is a crazy thing to say, and has upset a lot of people who say, you know, well, why would Wikipedia say such a stupid thing? Well, I'll tell you why, because the newspapers just made it up. We didn't say that. And um, our position on it is quite boring, actually. It's, it's very straightforward law. So. Um, I hope we are not a part of that. Um, obviously, if there's inf misinformation on the internet, it's going to affect us and we're going to put some of it in Wikipedia. But I think we're the piece of the culture that's saying, hold on, slow down, wait a minute. We really want good, solid information. And so I encourage everybody um, to try to resist clicking on those clickbait headlines and um, let's try to encourage the media to be more serious. I mean, but I was actually just with a, a journalist, um, a very good BBC journalist who said, uh, um, wow, you know, something I, I wrote, uh, uh, news stories that I've written for BBC News for the tech section, I've seen them quoted um, and cited as a source in Wikipedia, and that makes me feel like I have a responsibility, because what I write is going to go in this permanent record. I think, hey, great, that's good for, if journalists begin to realize you're not just blasting out some nonsense every day to keep people entertained and amused, but you're actually writing something that's important because it's going to affect the judgment of millions of people over a long period of time, then that's, I mean, that's actually a, a part of the cycle I'd never thought of before. I want to riff on what Jimmy just said, which is not necessarily your question, but I think is related, which is we are part of a knowledge ecosystem. We do not stand alone. We rely on good libraries and archives. We rely on open access. We rely on lots of knowledge being made open. And I think that Wikipedia helps people realize that, and that is a good thing. And we are part of, our movement is not our, just our projects and 
our people. Um, it's everyone working towards those goals, in my opinion. And um, so to the extent that we partner with open data initiatives and open access initiatives, et cetera, et cetera, um, those things will help as well. Great. I think we have time for just one more question, unfortunately. But of course, you can always add your questions to the wiki. Um, gentleman right there with your hand up in the air. <laughs> Yeah, and if you could project, and of course, Board, if you need anything repeated back. I try with the mic, without the mic. Without, without. That's great. Nice That's super. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we just go around the table? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's do that. We you want to repeat it, Jimmy? Oh, you'll make it hard for me. I think one of the great opportunities for us in the coming year and, and in the coming years is in the languages of the developing world. Um, the number of people getting online in the developing world in, in many places is astonishing. The boom in the internet access that we all experienced in wealthy countries in the late 90s and early 2000s is happening now um, on mobile devices. And that next billion people is coming online faster than anybody realized. And there are people who's, who have enormous problems in accessing information. Um, there, there's little information online in their languages. Um, it's the, the problems compound from there, and that's a huge opportunity, and I think it's going to require a lot of tech investment. Uh, it's going to require a lot of support from the community to welcome those new communities. I mean, there's always people out there who are trying to help uh, small languages grow by going and offering them some tech support and how to edit support in a language that they also understand. To me, that's the most exciting thing, um, and, and it's, it's happening now. Okay, plus one to everything that Jimmy said, and just... I just want to say thank you to Bishaka on this same theme. Before Bishaka came on the board, I was somehow the expert on India, because <laughs> I've been there a few times. Um, and I, I would like to see our board uh, remain and, and grow a little bit in its geographical diversity. Uh, I think it's really important. Sorry for stealing your expertise, Jimmy. But, um, <laughs> So yes, apart from agreeing mobile languages, all of that, I think also new ways of receiving information. I don't know how many people there are here who like to sometimes watch a video instead of reading something or hear something, etc. I think stuff like that is going to grow. I'm one of those people, every time I go see a movie, I whip out my phone in the middle and I quickly check like who's the director, who's the whatever, whatever, whatever. So sort of some of that bite-sized information type of stuff as well, yeah. There's so many things I want to talk about um, that I am having a hard time prioritizing, but I will share with you one thing I learned this morning from Lydia Pincher, who manages the projects for Wikidata, um, that 10,000 new people have edited Wikidata who have never edited another Wikimedia project. That's astonishing, that's amazing, and we will hopefully continue. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also agree with what my colleagues have said. Uh, I was going to talk also about Wikidata. I know the, one of the great opportunities we have in front of us is uh, providing better integration between our different projects. And I remember this session last year, we talked about uh, the fascinating growing of uh, Wikimedia Commons and Wikisource especially. And there, there's now uh, also, along with Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, Wikisource, etc., a new star in the sky of the Wikimedia movement world whatever, which is Wikidata, in fact. And, we, and Wikidata is also pushing us, because the next move, when we have the pure data 
structure in a single website. Uh, is, uh, Wikidata is pushing us to find better ways to integrate all of our projects because being simple data, it is related to any one of our projects. Uh, and I think that this will help you to find ways of better integrate our different projects and to better present the content of the different projects. Oops. I think that uh, we are uh, deeply linked to the future of the web. Uh, in this moment, there are a lot of people, as someone already told, that uh, are without internet access on a way. And on the other side, there are at least a couple of generations that are not interested in the web. But, but this will probably change in the next few years. Also, the way we are using the web will change. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, this will affect uh, our project too. I'm not sure in which way, but I think that we need to think about Okay, so the project answer is yes, Wikidata. <laughs> um, the bigger thing I'm enthusiastic about is that we have an executive director in Laila who has, has sort of has the motto of, I want to see what works and scale it. And I think if we can make that work across the movement, things like we see Wikilas Monuments works, we can scale it. And what we learn from that and we make it easier for other people to share the successes and not repeat the mistakes, that's the most exciting thing I'm looking forward to. The problem is that at this point, well, most of the interesting <laughs> things have already been said. Um, Wikidata, yes. <laughs> Mobile. And um, something particularly exciting would be uh, the possibilities in the technological department, all the tech toys we might be getting for the different projects. I really look forward to see what our engineering team can do in that regard. I think the greatest opportunity for us is making it easy for everyone to contribute again. Creating draft spaces for material that's not yet ready for any of the current projects. Creating a draft commons for any media that people want to share that's not yet ready for commons. Making spaces where anyone can share knowledge that they have about whatever they know, where it isn't going to be deleted and removed from the public eye. I think uh, the biggest opportunity is um, the biggest challenge at the same time. And I would uh, summarize with one word is simplicity. Getting simple to, to be able to join the movement, to be able to edit, to be able to access. So simplicity, I think, is the biggest opportunity and the biggest threat. Yeah, when I look outside, outside of my rooms or my houses, I see that the world is changing in a very, very high velocity, so it's quick, it's fast. Something is happening in every second. And people are wearing glasses, with, which gives them uh, additional information. And we talk about augmented reality and everything like that. And our, our core project, the uh, Wikipedia, is, is so slow in adopting these kind of ideas and things. And, where I see opportunities with that background is we are many. There are so many of us here, and there are so many of us not here, but also join this group of people, and we are strong, and we are still able to initiate change. Come to the keynote tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Catherine, thank you so much for moderating this. I would like to thank you all for attending. Um, I do want to uh, add one or two more things. Is We couldn't help but notice that the, the gender questioners were somewhat gender biased, just much like our projects, we, we had an overrepresentation of the male population. Thankfully for everyone, there's two more opportunities. You can talk to each one of us during the whole of Wikimania and ask us questions individually. We're there, that's what we'd like to do. Um, as I said, this is the most exciting and yet also the most uh, tiring week of the whole year, but it's a great week. And secondly, uh, as I've committed to before, if you add your questions to the board Q&A page, uh, we will move them to the board notice board, and I will put a message on the Wikimedia uh, L mailing list, and we will try and answer as much of them as possible, ignoring those that are intended to inflame us. Um, 
Finally, a, a very light request. Are there people that are playing the usual board Q&A bingo that are missing words? Because <laughs> this usually have this square with like all the cool words we're supposed to say. If no, we're okay. Thank you all Come very much for us. attending. <laughs> and I uh, hope to see you all next year. And if not, in the next couple of days. Um, great. Thank you. <laughs>